Harry? Harry? Harry, is that you? Hello? Good morning, Mrs. Cooper. Yes, this is New Cooper's apartment. Uh, are you his wife? No, this isn't Mrs. Cooper. Mr. Cooper divorced Mrs. Cooper a couple of weeks ago. Incompatibility. Perhaps you read about it in your newspapers. No, I don't know anything about his new album. I'm tone deaf, remember? Look, I've given all the interviews I want to give. I don't know where he is, and I don't care. But... You can probably reach him here later this afternoon. Mr. Cooper, I'm Linda Everett, Webster's secretary. How do you do? Uh, and where is Webb? Uh, he couldn't make it. He told me to tell you that he had a big deal going. Yeah, yeah, he's got a big deal going, yeah. A little busy today, kiddo. It's not a good chance for you and Linda to get acquainted, right? <laughs> Almost with Beta. As a matter of fact, something urgent did come up at the last minute. He said it wouldn't be long. Come on, I've got a car waiting. Hey. 
I was never really tone deaf, you know. I loved your music. I still love your music. Webster tells me you're not going to stay in your penthouse. No, I hope I've seen the last of that place. He says he's found me a house in the country away from things. Oh, what things are those? Do you always ask so many questions in such a short space of time? I like to get to know people as quickly as possible. Find out if I'm going to like them or not. How am I doing? Just, uh, terrific. No one else going to meet you here? Who else would bother? Gail? No, Gail's got better things to do with her time. Good to see you. How are you, Webb? How was the flight? Ten hours and 27 minutes. Oh, that's brutal. I was looking for you at the airport. Hmm. Quite a busy day, kiddo. I had a matter to attend to. Didn't take very long. Wouldn't you rather be met by a beautiful blonde than a senile old publisher like me? Every time. What do you think of that? Looks like the sort of place where you drive up and you find Lon Chaney playing the organ for you. Oh, come on. It's a beautiful estate. I got it for Zilch. It's only 40 minutes from town. For how long? I took it month to month, but it's ours for as long as we need it. The owners are on an extended vacation, and it comes complete with a housekeeping couple. Nothing too good for you, Nick. Harry fixed out a room with enough electronic equipment to launch the next moonshot. Looks like you got a lot riding on this one, huh? Your last album sold six million. But that was six years ago. Now, this one could do better, but you've got to work at it. That's what I'm here for. You bet your ass. Well, hmm? what happened? What are you talking about? The towel in the bathroom. Oh, I cut myself. Nothing to be concerned about. Anything you want from the apartment? I sent Harry there to pick up your mail. No, there's nothing I want. Gail came back here a couple of weeks ago. I think she went back to New York. You know that. I know that. Will you be seeing her? What for? Well, I'll drive you over to the house. No, Webb, I think I'm going to go down there on my own. I, uh, I kind of want some time to get my head together. Now you're tired. Don't want my boy tired. I'm not your boy, Webb. But I do appreciate everything you've done for me. See you tomorrow. Oh. Make up your mind yet? Working on it. Don't work too hard. He's been through a lot in the last few months. At least now, he can get some peace. <laughs>
must be Mr. Cooper. Oh, forgive my hands. I've been baking bread. Why don't you call me Nick? Mr. B! He'll bring your things inside. You must be tired after that long flight. Mr. B! Get him going on that hedge and there could be an earthquake before he'd move. Come inside. Mmm. Something smells good. I told you I was baking bread. You should listen. Lucky man. Mr. B can't eat sweet things. He, uh, he has a heart condition. I'm sorry to hear that. Have you lived here long? Since just after the war. We've worked for the butlers since 1948. Oh, yeah, they're, uh, they're on a cruise or something, aren't they? Around the world. It take them a year. Do you like cake? Mm, this is good. This is some house. It needs laughter. You don't have any children? Mr. B and I married late in life. Oh, will you be staying here long? At least until my record's finished. Maybe longer. Depends on the tax situation. It's so nice to have some company. We're both going to enjoy this. I'm quite sure. <laughs> Just turning in now, Mr. Cooper. I know you like a glass of brandy before bed. How do you know that? Read all about you in those fan magazines. Now, Mrs. B, you don't want to believe everything you read in those stupid magazines. They're quite detailed. Mr. B has checked all the windows and doors. We're safely locked up. I better let you get some sleep, huh? Oh, no, no, do carry on. Mr. B is quite a fan of yours. So am I. We've got all of your records. No kidding.
Is that you, Mrs. B? I didn't want a part of all that photo album gloom So I never wrote a Christmas card The postman passed her by it never mattered to me that she waited till I slept to cry. Old woman humming traces of some long forgotten tune. Rock me in my cradle, sing me softly in my room. Sing about a man who gave a picnic on the moon And he never stopped to thank you For the love he left so soon The traces of a long forgotten tune you left behind Make failures of my triumphs Cause I waited till you slept That's the one, Nick. I'll pay it back for you. Okay. That was sensational. Sounds even better from the beginning. Oh, sorry, kiddo. I was a little busy today. Looking for a replacement? In case I wash out? If I thought that, you wouldn't be here. Now, look. It was your idea, yours and that wife of yours, that you stopped working when you got married. So, now you've split and you want to start over again. That is okay. But six years is a long time in our business, Nick. And you make it this time. Or maybe you don't make it. So why don't we just cut the crap, okay? I admire your faith, Webb. You are a viable proposition, Nick. That is how I make my living, on viable propositions. You sure are a phrase maker. You never did like her, did you? She tried to destroy you, Nick. Time. Maybe we won't get that kind of interference. Well, how's a new place working out, huh? Hmm. I had a nightmare last night, Webb. I woke up in a cold sweat. I, I, I heard a, a young girl crying. No, not crying, sobbing. Oh, where well, you were dreaming? Well, a dream followed me downstairs, because I could still hear it from the hallway. Yeah, well, that's those old houses, you know, the echo. Uh, probably a radio, maybe a TV from the house next door. Well, the nearest house is 300 yards away. Um, cats. Cats? Cats. Making it in the yard. They sound like that. Midnight course. Maybe you ought to sign them, huh? Wild business and women.
a minute. You don't give a girl much of a chance to keep up with you, do you? You sure you're in the right race? I thought an executive secretary was looking for a man on the way up. Not a singer trying to make a comeback. Depends where he's been. I've got all your records at home. <laughs> so have I. <laughs> Just consider me an aging groupie. And don't be so hard on yourself. If Webb didn't have tremendous faith in your comeback, he never would have spent so much money setting you up here. Are you part of the deal? You certainly make a very attractive package. I'm not part of any deal. Anything I say or do is because I want to say or do it. I think I've been making a mistake. Wait a minute. I didn't mean that. I guess I'm a little edgy today, are you? Well, it's my first session in six years. Webb read me the facts of life. I guess he's right. How long have you worked for Webb? Just over a year. I sure miss this town. And the restaurants. Are they still as good? I know a super one. Down by the river. Very romantic. Well, I will pick you up at 8 o'clock. I wouldn't want to let an aging groupie down. Eight o'clock. Yeah, this is Nick Cooper. Nick. This is Harry. Harry? Welcome home. How have you been? Fine. Nice to hear from you, Harry. Hey, that uh, equipment you installed is terrific. A uh, lot riding on your shoulders, Nicky. You want to look ahead, clear out the past like, well, like it never happened. Yeah, I haven't spoken to Gail in a couple of months. Yeah, I know you have. I think you should go there tonight. Get your stuff out of there before she can get her hands on it. No, Harry, not tonight. Tonight, I'm going to dinner with a beautiful lady. And the last thing I want to do is think about Gail. I really think you should take care of it, Nikki. You should go there tonight. Tomorrow, Harry. Look, uh, I'm late. I got to go now, huh? I got the keys. Harry, tomorrow. I got to go now. All right, Nikki. Goodbye. Going out. A nice blonde young lady. She seems very nice. How do you know about Linda? We read all about it in the newspaper. We always keep all of your clippings. I'm very flattered. You have a good time tonight. Oh, I intend to. I might be late. We'll be here. Anything you need, anything you want, just call. We can always hear you. Good night. Good night. Oh, got cold waiting. Is that a sneak preview of things to come? Call it what you like. You'll have to work for the next one. Do you need any windows clean? After the third single made it and the album broke big in Europe, it seemed a good idea to move to L.A. Gail's idea. Yeah, Gail's idea. She's a California girl and was getting kind of homesick. Anyway, I was paying Her Majesty's Treasury a little bit more than I thought they were entitled to, so we split. Sounds fine. Well, it would have been. But I did learn that uh, America's not the place to be in our business unless you have a hit record. Tough, eh? Oh, I made out all right. But to a girl like Gail, success means everything. She started fooling around. A little. That was good, huh? 
I haven't had a meal like that since about uh, six, seven years ago. A little uh, restaurant outside of Maidenhead. Was that with Gail? Yeah. <sighs> Sorry. Didn't mean to stir painful memories. <laughs> they were painful. Not anymore. A little less every day. Evening, Nicky. Thought I'd catch up with you sooner or later. This is B. Heard you making the reservation. I don't think I've had the pleasure of meeting the young lady. This is Linda Everett. Your Webster Jones's secretary. That's right. I know a lot of things. Nicky and I have no secrets, do we, Nicky? This is Harry Cunningham. He's uh, been my right hand man now for many years. We've been through a lot together, Nicky and I. Seen them come and seen them go. Haven't we, Nicky? Harry, I told you I was busy tonight. Now, uh, what is so important it couldn't wait till tomorrow? I just don't like the idea of leaving all your things in that apartment where she can get her hands on them. Some of them are worth a lot of money, Nicky. The paintings, oh, the stereo system. Sure she's going to back a big uh, truck up and take them all out tonight, huh? Anyway, I think she's out of the country. No telling where she is or what she'd do. Anyway, the only things I need from there are, uh, well, some uh, mementos and... Uh, some jewelry that's locked in the uh, middle desk drawer. Well, let's get them tonight. Hey, I'd love to see your penthouse, Nick. Well, why don't we go and pick them up? Wouldn't take long. No, I don't want to go back there. You can go with Harry if you like. Okay. Sure you don't mind? I really wanted you to go with me, Nicky. I don't want a stranger. <laughs> Linda's not a stranger. I don't feel like one. Sure it's okay? Sure. You go ahead. I'll see you back at the house. Right. See you later. Take good care of her, will you, Harry? I will. God, this is a creepy place. I can't imagine anyone living here. Nick and Gail liked it. It's unusual. They spent a fortune. You should see it up there. It's a palace. Not anymore? Nope. Not anymore. knows how to pick them. Nick didn't pick me. I'd say you have beautiful breasts. That's the first thing I notice about a woman. Her breasts. Large, small, rounded, curved. I'd say yours were on the smallish side, but very round. The large nipples that, that harden when you're sexually aroused or frightened. Do you know what I mean? Take a look. What? Take a look. I want to go. No hurry. Please. I want to go. OK. I brought the wrong keys. You're frightened? No. Something about this place? No. It's all right. I'm with you. 
I wouldn't let anything happen to you. I promise Nick. We'll have to come back another time when I've got the right keys. While business and women had me reaching for the moon, her silent mind recalls me as a very tiny boy, pounding his piano like a music making toy. Dusty books and long love letters buried. What's the matter? Where's Harry? You dropped me off. We couldn't get into the penthouse. Nick, there's something strange about that place. I was frightened, terrified. Come on. No, I mean it. I sensed something. Something. Dark places, honey. That's all it was, a dark place. Harry. Harry's all right. That's what he said. I'd be all right, as long as I was with him. Honey, Harry is all right. I can hear he's still up. Make failures of my <laughs> triumphs Cause I waited till you slept Oh. I hope I'm not intruding this late. No, you're not intruding. Good. Well, Linda, I didn't expect to find you here tonight. Uh, you took your secretary to dinner. Oh. Well, I had some talks today, and I got an offer based on the tracks that we put down this afternoon. That's terrific. Are they going to back the whole album? Well, they're willing to listen to it. By the way, uh, take a look at those, would you? I'd appreciate it. Uh, new writer, he's got some talent. Also, there has been some talk about scoring a film. That's a little bit over my head, isn't it? I mean, I can uh, read music, but I can't write it. Well, I can. Well, I'm sure that you'd be a great deal of help to Nick. We'll have to talk about that when it's not so late. Would you take me home, Webb? I was just leaving. Yes, I can see that. Good night, Nick. Good see night. you tomorrow. Yes. We will both see you tomorrow. Good night, Nick. Good night, Webb. Shall I fetch a glass of brandy, Mr. Cooper? Uh, not tonight, thank you, Mrs. B. Huh? Help you to sleep. I don't need any help. Of course you don't. Mr. B has locked up. We're quite safe. Good night. Good night.
Jesus. My God. What is it? Did you have a nightmare? It was real. I saw it. Saw what? I heard a scream. I heard it scream. Heard what? What are you talking about? Mr. B, does he use a wheelchair? No, dear. Is there anyone else in this house? Not a living soul. Now, why don't you go back to bed and try and get some sleep? Mrs. B, I heard it scream. Of course you did, dear. We all hear things in our worst dreams. Horrible, dreadful memories of the devil. But you can overcome them. You can. I'm sorry, Mrs. B. I'm fine now. Good night, then. Good night. This is going to hurt a little.
I'm sorry if I startled you. <laughs> I thought you were in the garden. Oh, I was in the garden. Now I'm in here. Yeah, well, I was just uh, having a look around this beautiful house. I haven't really explored. I wouldn't explore too far. You could get lost in a house like this. Oriental mythology? Isn't that kind of heavy reading before breakfast? It is. I don't understand a word of it. I, I was looking for my book on tree surgery. And there it was, lying right there. Tree surgery? You see that tree out there? 260 years old, that is. That would explain the wrinkles. Screaming. Screaming with pain, it was. Really? Oh, we mustn't be late for Mrs. B's breakfast. That would never do. Oh, uh... Did Mrs. B tell you about my nightmare? She's an excellent cook, my wife. Hello, miss. Morning, Mrs. B. Coffee? No, thanks. Hi. Good morning. Hey, what's the matter? You look terrible. No, charming. That's just what an egocentric likes to hear the first thing in the morning. I feel fine, thank you. All is illusion. I'll be in the workroom. Linda, why don't we take the day off today? We could have a picnic, huh? Okay. I could boil some eggs, make a salad. And a cold bottle of Moselle. Butter, turkey, cold ham. Perhaps I could spread the butter for you. Mr. Jones. You gave me the wrong one yesterday. The keys? The next penthouse. He wants me to go there and pick up some stuff. Oh, I see. I didn't want to trouble you. They're right there. <laughs> Thanks. Haven't you found your own set yet? Uh, no, sir. I've reported them lost. Mr. Webster, could I have a word with you on Anything you want out of her? No, should there be? Well, I'll be off then. Mr. Webster? Huh? I've been meaning to talk to you. You see, I've studied singing for six years now, and well, I'm really sick of these session jobs and, and chorus gigs. And I was wondering if, if there was anything you could do for me. There is something you can do for me, Mr. Webster. There is something you can do for me, Mr. Webster. There is something you can do for me, Mr. Webster. And what's that, Gail? Let Nick go. Long leave of absence. Call it what you like. What will you be offering him? Chance to do his own thing. I want him to come home. Make his own kind of music. New York, maybe L.A. I don't want my husband a has-been teen idol before he's 30. You're crazy. You're just being selfish. Nick's not ready for that. And when he is, I'll be the first to know. Mr. Webster, I'm used to getting my own way. I 
I mean, if I could just audition for you. Any time. Anywhere. Anywhere it's convenient. Oh, uh, sure. Uh, why don't you come back later this afternoon? Oh, oh, thank you, Mr. Webster. strange when you left last night? I didn't know. What do you mean by strange? A corpse in a wheelchair. Nick, are you sure you hadn't taken anything before you went to bed? You mean, was I smoking dope? Something stronger. No, I don't do that anymore. Remember my friend, uh, Dave Lehman? Sax player, of course I do. Oh, well, he OD'd on smack. No, I don't even smoke French cigarettes. Corpse in a wheelchair. What could that be symbolic of? Never mind symbolic, sunshine. It was fucking there. logical points to me imagining it. I can see that. You know, you're very tense. Hey. Mm. You know, all this necking isn't right. Oh, I know. It's a soft one. So I'm going to insist on something. Oh, what? Make love to me.
There's um, there's someone there. Uh, do I know him? I mean, I wouldn't want to uh, cheat on a friend, you know. You know him, but it's not what you're thinking. And what am I thinking? Comfy cohabitation, marriage offer pending. It's nothing like that. Nothing worth mentioning. Good. So who was the lucky guy? Webster. Oh, great. The guy that holds my future in his hands is not even worth mentioning? It was a pretty casual kind of thing. Oh, I get it. Kind of a private, uh, lonely hearts club, huh? <laughs> Something like that. Besides, he... He what? Never mind. Okay, Miss Everett. I can accept that. But with Webster Jones. I think we should take dear, lonely Webb to dinner tonight. The three of us. Just to keep things straight. I wouldn't want him to find out from the janitor. I think he can manage one day without me. Oh, don't worry. I think he'll be delighted to see us. Guess he's not home? There's a light on in the bedroom window. Probably to keep burglars out. He does that a lot. He does, does he? Uh, yeah, he does. Will you stay with me tonight? Nick, I... Just, just tonight. No commitment. If you don't like it, there's um, always a new model coming down the pipeline. You always have to bring things down to such an acidic level. I'm sorry. Let's go up to the house, put on some music. I can recommend it. It's mine. It's an offer I can't refuse. Come on. Brandy, sir. That would be very nice, Mrs. Peter. And Miss Everett? Yes, thank you. I'll be down to get them in a minute. longer. Oh, I don't know. It's, it's my nerves. Come now. Look, I've bought you some rosebuds from the greenhouse. Rosebud. I did tell you I had a boyfriend. Uh-huh. But it had to be Webster, didn't it? We're not exactly the best of friends as it is. I meant nothing to him besides. He hates women. Yeah, but still. Oh, come 
Nick, you made Webster. Your sound's on every third tape they sell. My fucking epitaph. <laughs> Roll over, Beethoven. <laughs> Linda? Linda?
That's how we found him, poor boy. Just sitting huddled in a corner, sucking his thumb, tears streaming down his face. Had he shown any signs of odd behavior? Well, I hardly know the gentleman. But while he was here, he seemed quite normal. Go ahead, Mrs. B. Tell the doctor. It's for Nick's benefit. At night? Yes. Well, he seemed to imagine things like... How can I put it? Like a child, you know, terrified of the dark. Any examples? Oh, yes, examples. It, well, two nights ago, I got up to, you know... What time was this? Three o'clock in the morning. And there was Mr. Cooper creeping about the hall. Gave me quite a start, I can tell you. And then last night, he woke up screaming. I had to knock on his door. Poor boy. Too much coffee. I warned him. Thank God my husband's got his roses. A man needs something, don't you think? Yes, yes, thank you. Well, I, uh, I appreciate you coming over to this job. Well, that's okay. It's not really as bad as it looks, is it? I mean, the poor guy's been under a lot of pressure lately, domestic problems, and the pressure of completing the album. Oh, it could be all of those things. I can't say anything until he's had specialist observation. Just don't get your hopes up. I've seen patients like this before. It's the look in their eyes. What look? Madness. Oh, good. Well, how do you do? How's Nick? We've sedated him. I understand you and the doctor searched the house from top to bottom. Yes, we did. The couple that take care of the place were a lot of help. Mm -hmm. The housekeeper said that Nick was going on about a decomposing head. Yeah, but there wasn't anything at the house. I mean, there was no head, there was no hat box. And more important, there were no materials with which to present the illusion of things like that. Could he have been on drugs? Well, he didn't take as much as an aspirin. He lost his best friend that way. Drink? It's the classic DT syndrome. Oh, social drinker. I mean, you can't get social DTs. He was a social drinker. Was? <laughs> I'm not going to die, Mr. Jones. 
No, it sounds to me like a, a touch of hysterical exhaustion. The nerves can stretch, you know, but the brain eventually becomes exhausted. It's not uncommon amongst creative, ambitious, striving sorts of people. Add a gifted imagination and domestic confusion, and you're into nightmare country. French call it fatigue mentale. It's a good description. Yeah, poor Nick. I think you have to rest. Oh, of course. Well, when will he be well again? Well, I'm going to give him deep sleep for a few days. I wouldn't like to guess how he'd come out of it. But if you were to guess? And his EEG is nearer to normal than I anticipated. That means his subconscious brain activity has not been thrown into irreconcilable trauma. What Ian means, Webster, is that with proper rest, Nick will be back to his old self before too long. Yes, but how long? I'm not prepared to say. Welcome home. What should I, uh, what should I say, um... How about where am I? Okay, where am I? You're in the Belmont Hospital, and you've had a nice sleep for five days. It says here if you should waken while I'm on duty, I should tell you tactfully what happened. What happened? You went nuts. Webster, will you stop that pacing? Nick's been very capable hands the past two weeks. Right. I told you, we've got some good news for you today. Soda? Uh, whatever you're having. Right. On its own. Nick, you still believe you saw a head, don't you? Yeah, I, I saw Gail's head. I can still smell it. I admit it. And the putrefying corpse in a wheelchair? Yes. And the screams and the sobbing? Yes. All right. How far do you... Trust me. All the way. You want my diagnosis? Go ahead. Classic nervous fatigue, leading to hysterical hallucinations. You've been away from it all for six years, right? Eh? You come back, throw yourself in at the deep end. Contracts, deals, worrying about money, resenting being ripped off by people like Webster Jones. Am I right? So far. Then your wife, your prop, leaves you after God knows how many casual affairs. You feel guilty about losing her. Maybe you neglected her. Okay. Then anxiety sets in. Anxiety that maybe she isn't going to come back to you. So what do you do? You close up the penthouse, cut yourself off from the old life and start a new one. But now everything seems unreal. The affair with Linda, the talk about a movie score. Nothing seems real away from your old, familiar life. Now, how's that sound? I could buy that. But did I really imagine these things? The screaming and the, the head? Yes, I believe so. And those symptoms may very well recur. But if you can convince yourself that it's only in your own mind, then I think you'll, you'll very soon recover. How'd you like to be discharged? I like it. Don't go knock. Don't forget to take the pills. I, uh, I'm still worried about those hallucinations. No, don't be. You'll cope. In a couple of months, you, you won't believe it ever happened. Thanks, Doc. Don't mention it. And Nick. Yeah? Go back to the penthouse. Open it up. Play some sounds. Look at the river. Give it a try. I'll do that.
Well, look, I'll drop you back at the house, and we don't have to start on the album right away. We can give it a couple of days. It'll be fine. Say, Webb. Huh? You know, Linda never came to see me. Not once. Where is she, Webb? Well, the morning after they found you, there was a note on my desk for her. She said that she wanted to go away and think things over, whatever the hell that means. I haven't seen her since. Must have tried to reach her twice a day. Never any answer. I had to hire myself a temporary. By the way, what was going on between you and them? Nothing. Well, if she left that night, she mustn't have known that you were in the hospital. Don't you worry. You'll see Linda again. You can be sure of that. Well, see you, Webb. Right. to see. Come away in. You'll never guess what I've cooked for you. That was a track from Nick Cooper's last album, How Many Miles to Jupiter. Well, Nick's just out of hospital after treatment for a bad back. I won't ask you how you got that, Nick. Let's keep it in that late night romantic mood with this little piece. And if you're there, Nick, get well soon.
This is Nick Cooper. Can I speak to Webb, please? One moment, please. Hello, kiddo. Where are you? At the penthouse. Penthouse? Sure. Isn't that what the doctor told me to do? Go back and relive my memories? And get them out of my system? Well, yeah, I guess so. I just didn't think you'd want to start that reliving so soon. Listen, Webb. Webb, there's something, uh, there's something strange about this place. There's new carpet on the floor, and uh, the walls have been scrubbed white. And there's an antiseptic smell about the place. And the elevator, too. Gail's been here. I can feel it, Webb. I know she's been here. Gail is probably not even in the country. Well, where's Harry? He's been here, too. Harry? He just disappeared. I, I think he took off. He's been threatening to do that. I wouldn't care if I never saw him again. I would. Look, uh, where are you going now? Back to the house. Oh, all right. Uh, you do that. Uh, look, just... Don't talk to anybody else about this. I'll be right out. Right. scrubbed all the walls. Well, that was helpful of them. There's a brand new carpet on the floor, too. Good heavens. The elevator had a stench of uh, disinfectant. Sounds as if somebody had a party there and had to clean up. Hmm. Quite a party. Must have been Harry. Harry? Hmm. Naughty, Harry. You know what I think? I mean, I know I'm just been ill and everything, but uh, I think Harry's been murdered, Mrs. V. Mrs. B. Doing this. You killed her. Killed who? I'll tell the bastard. We had a daughter once, a lovely girl, just starting university she was, studying sociology. Mr. B and I adored her. She adored us. We called her Rosebud. <laughs> She was a pop music fan, like many young people. You were her idol. You, with your foul contortions and your lewd, suggestive songs, with your music that drives innocent children to behave like beasts in a farmyard. Disgusting. Then you married that slut, Gail, your dear Gail. Whose maggoty head you really did see. Oh, yes. I wish I could have heard her scream like Albert did. The day you announced your marriage to Gail, our Rosebud went to bed, surrounded by poems she'd written to you, and killed herself. Have you ever seen a child die of strychnine poisoning? <sighs> You scum! You can't blame me. Kill the bastard! Hello? Oh, Johnny? Oh, Johnny! <laughs> oh. 
Holy shit! What kind of pills do I take for that? Damn it, did you hear something? No. Get an ambulance. Hello? Hello? And make it quick. Stand back. Sorry you had to get mixed up in all this. Do I still have a job? Sure you do. How about that? This was their house. There never were any vacationing owners. So, you're not crazy. Doesn't look like it. Great. That means we can get back to work on the album. 
Webb, you're something else, you know that? Business is business, kiddo. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I've left two offices inside. I think you'll find everything's OK now. Oh, look. Is, is there anything else you... Nothing. Nothing else we can do for you? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 